nobody really had expectations. I mean, with Wonder Woman and Superman and Batman, even people who don't read comic books have an idea of what that character should be, should sound like. There wasn't really anybody who was going to go, um, I don't think so, John Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And we hope your new year is off to a great start, and now we hope to make it a little better, because today we are going back to the Watchtower with five cast members and a creative architect from the animated Justice League series, and now is the time for all of you in our chat room to begin typing in your questions for them. Immediately after this session, you will have the opportunity to talk to them directly through our private chat options, as well as shop our selection of personalized autographs, all of which are available now at GalaxyCon.com. So without further ado, let's rub up the javelin and bring them down. Our first guest is an actor whose body of work includes Father of the Bride, Scandal, and the highly underrated Pirates of Darkwater. Today he joins us to discuss the role of mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent, better known as the Man of Steel himself, Superman. Please welcome back George Newbern. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? I'm very good. Good to be very here. Very good. Why, why were you doing that uh, that thing back there? Were you trying to get to Narnia? Uh, nothing. I was just I was giving you an opening credit take. We're not looking. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. I just happened to be here. Yeah. yeah so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> George, how are you, man? I'm great to great to see you again. You, you're so good at your job, and happy. Well, to be thank here. you. Well, well, it was uh, sorry you, sir. Welcome back. Uh, hope you had a good no. holiday season. I I did. I did a very good, and and uh, we still have Christmas stuff up everywhere, and I'm I'm sort of um, wondering dreading when that's going to happen to have to take it all down well you know the rule, rule, <laughs> of, rule of thumb is always the monday after New monday Year's. after or when, yeah, the, when yeah. the kids go back to school you know yeah yeah oh well, there's no kids going back to school uh, so, yeah yeah that's that's great so you can keep your christmas <laughs> stuff up forever well, at least until the cure gets us. But, uh, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of this current time stuff. George, welcome back. Pleasure to see you. Pleasure to have you. Thank you. Good to be back. Our next guest Excellent. is an actress. Absolutely. Our next guest is an actress whose roles include Camp Rock, Wizards of Waverly Place, and the undervalued series Key West. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Lieutenant Shiara Hall of the Thetagarian Army Intelligence, better known on Earth as Hawkgirl. Please welcome back Marina Canals Barra. Woo! Hey, Maria Canal of Can we hear you? Oh, yeah, you're muted. Ooh. We see you, but we don't hear you. I'm sorry. It, it, yeah, you seem to be muted still. Yeah. Oh, dear. Maria just said, get my husband in here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no. All right. Maria's going to tackle it. go back to someone else. Yeah. Yes, I will. Just, we'll, just, no, no, we'll just go on back to it. Our next guest is an actor whose credits include Pulp Fiction, Futurama, and of course, Samurai Jack. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of United States Marine John Stewart, later recruited into serving as Green Lantern of Space Sector 2814. Please welcome back the always awesome Phil Lamar. Yay, oh wait, Bill Lamar. Oh, this is a virtual <laughs> panel. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah. Baby. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Wow. Phil, I, how have you been? I've been good, Patty. How are you? Uh holding up. Uh, you know, it's a uh, holidays went well. I just had my 50th uh, two days ago. And um Ooh. and did I, you get some hair product as a present? Uh well, no, it's just it's always sculpted. No, it's still like this because in in the sp in, in the spirit of uh, heroes and flying through the air, I took a ride on a biplane and did the whole acrobatic stuff and everything else and pushed three G's and um, did you really? Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. Cool. yeah. It was it was it was it was it, it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. Whoa, amazing! That's amazing. So yeah, I, I I recommend I recommend it more than a parachute tandem jump. Oh, I'm not doing that. Although Man, I had to wear a parachute that. because we're doing acrobatics, so you have to wear this parachute. And yeah, so. Oh yeah. God. But. Yeah. Right, so you anyway. go like this, right? That's frightening. <laughs> right. Wait. wait, 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 wait like that. Hey! Oh ho! Look at him. Uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why he's Superman. <laughs> anyway. So Phil, you doing good? Yep. Yep. Plugging along. 
<laughs> Plug it along, indeed. And we will continue this. She is an actress whose credits and roles include Star Wars, The Force Unleashed, the revived version of Suspense, and the upcoming series Masters of the Universe Revelation. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Princess and Ambassador Diana of the Mascara, better known to the outside world as Wonder Woman. Please welcome back Susan Eisenberg. Yay! It was, it's so hard not to applaud when I'm off, like I was off screen. I'm like, yay! <laughs> yay, Bill! Yay, George! <laughs> oh, Susan, how are you? Hanging in. I'm good. I'm well. Happy New Year to you and happy birthday, I heard. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a happy New Year and happy holidays to you as well. Thank you. And I think Maria, I think Maria is back. I, All right. I, I see that she's is she back. back. Is she back? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Oh, we, we should have messed with her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did, actually, I did that once on a panel and I got flamed for it. Never mind, Maria, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I, I am doing well. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful holiday season and a new year. I did, I did. All things considered, it was wonderful. Mm. Oh, so glad, so glad. And speaking of wonderful and awesome, our next guest is. He's an actor of body work includes Kennedy, Tour of Duty, and the George Washington miniseries. Today, he joins us to discuss the role he's been performing brilliantly since 1992. Billionaire, bon vivant, Bruce Wayne, better known as the Dark Knight Detective, Batman. Please welcome back everyone's friend, Kevin Conroy. Yay! Welcome to Wayne Manor. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) Patty, you forgot to mention his soap roles on Another World. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I'm not sure he'd want me to talk about that. Whenever oh I, my God. When I do, when I do my introductions, I try to think, okay, what are the fa- fandom going to appreciate? And... I'm a soap fan. I'm a soap fan and a Batman <laughs> fan, so I want to combine those worlds. What are your favorite regional <laughs> theater credits? What are your favorite regional theater credits? you have to do to make a living. And most New York actors end up doing soaps for a while. Right. So I started yeah, out- absolutely. I did Another World. I did Search for Tomorrow. Tomorrow, I yeah. I, know. I played a rock singer on Search for Tomorrow. Whoa. Come on, baby. You're, 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 you're going to make me look up pictures of that and show it next time I have you. Fair you Patty, you know? there's some no. crossover with the daytime fans and the, and the uh, and the, you know, the superhero fans. So, you're, you know, you I'm are, you are absolutely you correct. The you're absolutely I did correct. Uh, with Mel Tillis uh, for the show. And then I even, I did a morning show with Gladys Knight. Isn't that what? Right? Gladys Knight. <laughs> I work with Gladys Knight on a TV, by the way. Those are my singing. Those oh, are my wow. Singing. Yeah. Fair oh, enough. Wow. Well, oh, we well should talk, you know what we should talk about at some point? Legends what? we have worked with. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like Gladys Knight. That's very cool. Come on. It is. Come on. Uh, all right. All right. All right. Well, we'll speak. Speaking of recording and speaking of legends, our final guest is an absolute paragon of her profession, an actress, director, and casting director of some of the finest Western animation of the past decades, which include the original DuckTales, Tiny Toon Adventures, Animaniacs, and its spinoffs, and of course, the completely mental misadventures of Ed Grimley. Today, she joins us to discuss selecting all of our wonderful guests in their roles in Batman the Animated Series, Justice League, Batman Beyond, and anything else under the Timverse, and anything else you probably loved from your childhood. Please welcome back, Andre. Andrea Romano. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you, did the, you did the double take. You did I double did take. it. And I did it for you, George, so you can sort of book it. I love it. I love it. Hi, hey, you guys. Hello, you darlings all. Uh, Andrea, how are you? you? I'm sitting up and taking nourishment. <laughs> After the story you told us five minutes before, I, that uh, is, I was I, glad to have you anyway. We'll have, thank we'll take. you so much. I took a fall, but I'm just fine. Totally fine. Thank you. Uh, mm. Absolutely. And well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, uh, thank you for joining us here. Uh, again, we uh, look forward to the day the world gets back to normal and we can once again have you back on our stages and get you all back in front of your fans. In the meantime, we are here at the GalaxyCon virtual stage. And as always, it's a pleasure to have you all. Thank you. Thank you. Our team right now is going to the chat room, pulling out the questions. In the meantime, I'd, I'd like to offer, I'd like to just open up with this. When the when the show was developed as Justice League, uh, when did you all feel like uh, in Justice League, that first season, had really sort of like, like, like maybe eclipsed even your initial expectations? Well, Patty, you got to remember, with animation, we didn't see the show till a year after we recorded it. Yeah. You know, although, as I was just uh, reminding everybody, we did have a big screening of the initial episodes at uh, Warner Brothers. 
Mm-hmm. And I mean, I have to say for me, seeing it with everybody that worked on it on a big screen for the first time made it real. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I think we had an advantage in that we had already lived in that genre a bit when we were doing Batman, the animated series, and then a a few things that followed that. So we kind of had a sense of what it was we were doing. Uh, But uh, I felt the same way, Phil, when we saw that first episode on the big screen, massive studio speakers so we could hear that magnificent music and uh, mm-hmm. and it was it was special it was a really special series it had things that connected it to things we had done in the past and then some brand new stuff which was so absolutely mm-hmm. wonderful truly mm-hmm. absolutely expanding the uh, sometimes referred to as the timbers uh based on his art and uh i think that i think that name is sort of stuck uh if i could have my druthers i'd call it the romano verse but that's just me isn't it? hey thanks that. man <laughs> hey, well no why Patty, the Romano verse is much bigger. <laughs> You're right. It is very big. You're, You're, right. You are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So, Andrea, uh, I've heard about their version of how they got cast in these roles. Uh, how about uh, from your perspective? Uh, it was a, an enormous search, as you can well imagine. It was so many. I think we auditioned. Um, there were probably as many as like seven or eight main characters that we were auditioning. And uh, over some time over the time of production before that, Bruce Tim had learned some of the actors that I knew and loved and we had auditioned people for some things that they didn't ultimately get, but he kept them in mind. And um, and what I always did and, and, and the process that I went through is I would get auditions from agents. They would send me their 10 best for each character. And then I would call that down to the people that I wanted to either direct myself if I didn't know them very well, or have Bruce Tim see them and how they work so that Bruce could feel confident that this was the right guy. And I think we talked about this, Phil, not long ago, where you were doing Static Shock, and I said, I want to bring Phil in. Uh, and he said, no, you know, that's not much too young a voice. And I said, no, wait, just bear with me, just give me a chance. And then Phil walked in and said, okay, blah, blah, this guy. And then started with his voice. And then it was one of those great moments where you see Bruce Tim go, I've been schooled uh, <laughs> that these guys aren't just one voice guys. These guys are versatile. And um, and the trick always with these kinds of shows, superhero shows like this, is to not have everybody doing that. You want them to find the lowest placement that's comfortable in their own range. Kevin has found a place where he can put that voice and talk for hours and hours and hours in that voice. Phil has found a place where he can put that voice. George did as well. You want the actors to be much more concerned about the acting than producing the voice. And so that was the trick. Maria and Susan, I did not know before then. I heard their auditions and I was, they were at the top of my list as far as, the, you know, I submit five choices to the producer. Here's the five people that I like. I would be happy with any one of these five. And you're looking at the group that he selected. Yay. And I did with my, with my support, 100% support. God. And for <laughs> me, so lucky. Uh, Going from the Batman show to this show was such a transition because I had a whole show to to show my character and and in this I was one of a whole you know troop. And, so and I, Batman is a reluctant member. Us. Right. Batman yeah. is a reluctant member of that troop. You yeah, know what I mean? Batman awesome. doesn't really want to be in the Justice League, so <laughs> oh, a whole Batman. different. I think, Phil, I think Phil had a similar journey going from Static Shock. Uh, when you're the central character of a show, you have so much more latitude to show right. your story. Right. When you're one of seven, um, it makes it much more difficult. The, uh, yeah. the 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 scripts, though, definitely gave that character those quality moments, though, for, oh. for, 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 for Batman and everything else. Yeah, we didn't get as much Batman in Batman the Animated Series, but the Batman we did get intensified right. and pure and... Again, the the the, the character arcs yeah. and all this. Everybody had something going on in the development, and just yeah, yeah. Well, everyone got I remember, Yeah, I remember talking to the Dwayne and some of the writers. You know, when it first started out, and at the beginning, the biggest challenge was how do we write for seven leads? Right, right. Mm. You know, they did such and, a good job, didn't they? 
Yeah, yeah it was really good. Good. everybody really got good. their due. It was lovely. It'd be a major hot girl story arc that would take many episodes, or a, a Wonder Woman, or, or it just they did such a good job of divvying it up. They did. Yeah. I could have done less. Uh, less of Batman would have been better for me, but. <laughs> well, no, George, George, I bet yeah. you would have been happier had they not depowered Superman, which was another thing that was controversial at the time. It was, it was, it was. And it didn't, you know, it, it didn't help that I needed to find my voice as, as halfway through the series. But what yeah, do you mean depowered, yeah. Phil? Well, a, a lot of people, you know, coming into this thought of Superman as the Christopher Reeve Superman who flew around the planet and spun it backwards. Yeah. That, that guy doesn't need six teammates. No. No, no. Right, right. <laughs> but, 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 but you're right, though. But, but bring, him, bring him down to the equivalent of a, the Max Fleischer Superman. Which yes, was, he was a really strong guy, but not, he's somebody who couldn't, wasn't pushing planets. But right, what was right. funny is whenever we would go in as a team, well, Superman's not invulnerable, but but he's really strong. So Superman would always go first, and it was always George. Okay, we're going to start with uh, George. You're getting hit with these beams, so you had so much more like getting so, hit effort than the rest of us. And, and the electricity. I don't know why yeah. we yeah, always so much. I don't, like I don't like electricity. I don't like it. I don't like it. Never did. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had the wonderful seasons. What was it like in the transition from Justice League to Justice League Unlimited, where it just seems like the the Mad Men just unscrew the jar of uh, of the DC universe after they have shaken it and just let the all these Andrea that must have been it was a casting challenge. I'll tell yeah. you because it was so many characters, and you know, many cartoon series. A lot of their success is dependent upon how the merchandise sells. That's just business. That is the way it goes, and so what the um, toy company wanted to do was introduce, thank you, introduce a bunch of new characters so they could then sell their toys. Well, they may only have two or three lines in the episode, but at least there's a physical presence and there's a name and they're introduced. And now they can say, okay, you can get this from the new Justice League Unlimited series. But the truth is trying to find someone who can give me something that's memorable in only three or four lines mm -hmm. with the budget that I'm given, which is, minimal and use actors as many times as you can. So people who are versatile, Phil, I'm sure you covered a couple of other characters in that when we went to Unlimited and yep. everybody got to do a couple of extra things because yep. they would only have a couple of lives. But I think within like the last three or four episodes of the series, of the whole series, Justice League Unlimited, they threw about 20 characters at me and said, we need these 20 characters cast for the last five yep. episodes. Wow. wow. So there's so like, many things that you consider like, Okay, who's going to do a really good job? That's the first. Who needs a job? Because that's really important to me. So yeah. often I would get, I remember he, we just lost him, David L. Lander, who just passed mm. away from mm -hmm. a I remember getting a phone call from his agent saying he's going to lose his SAG insurance if he doesn't have a gig. And he had, was it MS or something? Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. Like, I will find anything for him. Nobody should be without insurance because they, you know they didn't get another job so right. um it was always like finding those people that needed a job right. and who mm -hmm. always is going to play well with the party mm -hmm. guests i've already invited mm -hmm. you know yeah. you guys were key and then i had to make sure that the people i brought in with you were um of the same ilk, had the same sensitivities, had the same sensibilities, had, you know, the desire to do well. And they knew that they were just coming at the end of the series and they might disappear in a couple of episodes, but right. so it was- It was all that, or they had to be in the cast of Firefly, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? You can always tell what I'm watching. The whole <laughs> of Criminal Minds in right? one season. Oh, everybody that's so funny. Like Matthew Gray Goobler and Joe Martin, yeah, everybody. So you can you can always tell what I've been watching. It's the truth. <laughs> that is so that's funny. So funny. On, I remember in Batman the Animated Series, you said there was a point where word had gotten out in the industry that there was this great show being done at Warner Bros. And you said that you could get anyone that you invited on that show. I pretty much could. It was Every what you were talking about. What you were saying, Maria, about we should talk about the incredible people that we got to work with the agents for these incredible people would reach out to me and say, somebody told my client that this is a really fun show and they've always wanted to do animation. Can you keep them in mind? And I kept a really long list of those wow. people and got wow. most of them in, but you know, the one I didn't get in that I wanted, that was my favorite. 
Who? Who? Alex Trebek. Oh. I wanted Alex Trebek to come to a show How with us. Amazing would that have been? It would have been really fun. Right? I, I met him after the Emmys one night. And I was holding an Emmy, and that does get somebody's attention. And he was giving up. <laughs> and, and I said, I'd love for you to come and play on the show. He goes, oh, you know, I do many voices. And I said, I know, I've heard you do it over the years on Jeopardy. And then he just got too sick, and we couldn't get him. Oh, but that was oh, one of the failures wow. of my life that I wasn't able to bring Alex to back in. Uh, did you have a character in mind for him? It was a great character I was doing on a Thundercats episode, I think it was, where he was a game show host. But with a lot of humor. And I knew he could have done it, but ultimately the producers wanted a comedian. Oh, so they had a comedian. Yeah. I think he would have been awesome. I think he would have been really good. Hmm. I would have, if for in Justice League, I maybe High Father of the New Gods. Could be. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, cause you know, like, or the voice of the source, if that ever uh, came through. So, ah, you opened us up for the week. So, ah, uh, well, I was going to tell you, I think we we're good to go on our audience questions. So let's go ahead and switch over to them. And our first one is going to come from, from, from. <laughs> oh, the suspense is, the suspense is killing me. I hope it'll last. There we go, Robert. <laughs> Any episodes or moments that hit hard in terms of seriousness that left you thinking? Well, there were there were definitely a few. That hit hard in terms of oof. we didn't we have an episode that we did that had uh, a building collapse just like the Twin Towers collapsed uh, 9 11. I think we had something, it might have been a Batman the Animated Series episode, or it was a Justice League episode where the, and you know what, you guys may not have seen it because they would have had to call for a retake before you right. ever saw it. But things like that, where there was this sort of, you know, I mean, the buildings in the animation fell exactly the way the Twin Towers fell. Uh, and it, you know, I, 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 I remember it. I remember a surreal moment when we were, we, like what you're talking about, there was some sort of violence going on on Justice League. And we took a lunch break and we went out in the in the um, the foyer and we had just the Iraq war had just started. Oh. And I remember standing with Susan and we were watching Baghdad get bombed. Jeez. And it was so surreal. Uh, and and we were, I was like, oh, my God, we're going in and voicing a cartoon. And this is really blowing up right here. It was very, very odd. So it was serious. It's not in terms of character. Story, it was sort of a, you know, yeah. a life seriousness moment that I, I'll never forget right. that. Never forget that. And didn't you have one too? Weren't we over at uh, Soundcastle when there were fires burning in the city of Los Angeles? Was it Rodney King? What was it? Something was oh, going on. That we was had way. We had a booking the day the fires, the, the riots broke out. That's right. Oh, so that must have been on Batman. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, Batman. Not on our thing. That yeah, not on our. That's and right. that's, that's that booking was not canceled. No, so we didn't. No. What are we doing here? <laughs> Every other car was going the other direction, right? I thought there's something wrong with this picture. Wow! Yeah. But it was before oh. cell phones, so I couldn't right. call anybody. That's right. I that was before cell phones. Was it really? This well, was like before they were prevalent. Before everybody had them, you know, they were around. Right. But not everybody had them, so you couldn't count on. Let me just call Kevin. Right, 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 right. Oh, come on! Cartoons are riot proof. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, Phil, how about you? Any uh, any one of the stories that can really hit you in the feels? Well, I mean, without a doubt, I mean, there are a handful of animated episodes. There's one Futurama episode where Fry's dog dies. But for me in Justice League, George, the episode for the man who has everything, where, yeah, absolutely. you know, yeah. Superman has the fantasy of what his life on Krypton could have been. And then realize, mm -hmm. and then has to like divest yeah. himself of his, you know, heart's desire in order to survive. That yeah. kills me every. I tear. I tear up just talking about it, much less yeah. watching. Oh, uh, it's it's a, it's a great episode, no question. My favorite, right. I think. I uh, what I heard, what I yeah, I heard they're adapting that from Alan Moore's story. I was like, that's courageous, <laughs> especially how stark that was. And again, a fantastic translation of it. And yeah. again, yeah. Uh, George, credit on you on that for us. Oh, you took you. you you took took him in a lot of a lot of places wow. that thank we're you. not used to seeing Superman win. No, thank you. No, absolutely, absolutely. So, Kevin, how about you? What uh, was there a story in Justice League that's made you go wow? Well, he's you know Batman is such what what makes playing the character so much fun is, is um, the tragedy of his 
of his story, the tragedy of his childhood, and the fact that he's always living a double identity. So any story that sent me into my past life, my 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 the drama of my family, um, always resonated a lot with me. Um, yeah. One that was the most powerful, I think, is, is not a Justice League, it was Mask of the Phantasm, where Batman has to go to the graves of his parents and ask them to release him from his back now. And wow. it's a very emotional scene for me to play. Hmm. Um, but anything that dealt with the inner struggle of Batman always resonated very much with me. This one always comes to mind with uh, Batman in the series, this scene. Having mm. to deal with it, having, you know, this character is about to about to go figuratively and literally and the gentleness that Batman has yeah. for her and the, and the tremendous sympathy. Yeah. Still, again, still push through Batman's, you know, so absolutely. Uh, Maria, how about you? Um, you know, it didn't make me like feel sad, but I, or it made me feel like, wow, animation can be so powerful. I remember mm -hmm. when, um, when I was, uh, having that love affair with, um, Phil, I was like, Same wow, here. Is, I was like, this is so <laughs> like, right. uh, powerful. I don't want to use an yeah. inappropriate word, but it was stimulating. <laughs> it was like to, to watch that. It was like, Oh gosh. Like to, <laughs> to, to, and I never like put myself like, like as an audience member watching something that is animated, making me feel things the way that, um, a live action makes people feel all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized, well, wow, this is really not just the writing, the animation, the direction, and the people I'm working with, and the character I get to play. This is on a different level. And this is exciting. It's so cinematic. And it's, it's so beautiful. And sure enough, that was the impact that people had. I felt it yeah. when we were doing it. And that's what people talk about. And mm -hmm. I'm just so, so glad I got to be part of something so awesome. And uh, again, you and you had you had two character arcs. There, there, there was her own and the relationship between them. And I, I love the fact that th their relationship was on an incredible slow burn. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't just the first time they met. They were like looking at each other and hey, we should. At the end of the first episode, they're like, let's go out for coffee sometime. No, this this was a very nice, breathable relationship of highs and lows and. Leading, leading up to uh, you know my fair, uh, <laughs> my fair John Stewart, but when they go in the future, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, we didn't know it was coming. They didn't. I, I mean, I don't know about you, Maria, but I didn't know that that romance was part of the story arc. Yeah, me neither. They didn't tell us anything. That's what kept it exciting, right? <laughs> I, I, curiosity, Andrea, did you have any sort of an advance notice about where the direction was going, or? Uh, if it was important, whether uh, uh, on how I cast certain guest mm -hmm. roles or uh, how I directed certain scenes, we were trying to leave some clues earlier that'll play out in a couple of episodes, they would tell me then. But no, I was in as, as much dark as the, the cast. I would see the script when it came through. And so I would see the script just a little bit before the actors. As soon as it came through to me, I would send it on to the actors so they had some time to look at it ahead of time. But I think you're right, Maria. I think it did keep it exciting and fresh and we weren't in on all the stories and and very often i would read a script and go i don't even know who that character is and i'd have to call up bruce tim or paul dini go who or alan burden go who is that and they go oh the red tornado was this and he did this and that's where he came from and and then that character would have four lines and we'd never see him again yeah but, but again this is a credit to you because as a hardcore you know a dc fan Again, your choices were perfect. They were so inimical of the character, which made me believe, wow, they got some really heavy nerds behind the scenes there <laughs> going I, hard I, in the I, paint on this. And I had great reference material in the producers who worked on that show and the writers who worked on that show. And, they and, knew so much stuff. And, 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 and again, so many guys, and of course, you know, Dwayne McDuffie is still yeah, terribly missed. Mm -hmm. absolutely terribly missed. Yes. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, Susan, what was, a, what was a moment for you that... Uh, kind of caught you by surprise. I think probably leaving Themyscira, you know, I yeah. just think all the scenes with my mother was, mm. you know, um, Hippolyta played by Susan Sullivan, who I grew up watching. 
And um, I just, she was a Paulita to me. She was just beautiful in the role. And I don't think she'd done animation and, you know, wasn't familiar with it. And, uh, and those scenes, the mother daughter scenes were really beautiful. Um, And, you know, but then also like the scenes when we were all together, you know, like when the seven of us got to play together, that those also felt very powerful. Mm-hmm. And I was a huge fan of the um, of Maria and Phil's romance. I mean, because I'm <laughs> I'm a romantic, uh, and I just loved that their their chemistry was amazing, and I just thought the story was beautifully told. So yeah, those that probably those three things, and of course well, and- my relationship with Batman, but. <laughs> that, that wasn't serious. That wasn't serious. <laughs> well, you know, it certainly you can't got... let it go, can you? You can't let it go. <laughs> no. It uh Wait, Patty, can I ask one question? Of There's course. something, Andrea. Andrea, you just said something that made made me wonder. Um you know about what you knew when. When was the decision made to cast the Thanagarians as Latinx actors. Because I noticed once we had the Thanagarian invasion, uh-huh. everybody was, yep. everybody from Hawkgirl's land was Hispanic in some way. Because I always point to that when people, you know, because nowadays everybody's talking about diversity. Back then that wasn't a, wor- a buzzword. Right, right. But, I- but to me, that's that's one of the amazing things where casting Hawkgirl, casting Maria as Hawkgirl added this level, this right. dimension that that once you you know get to that you know Thanagarian invasion storyline, now you have this texture that you would not have otherwise. Right, right. I, I, the decision was made very early on, as soon as we knew Maria. And now I don't think Maria's voice as Hawk Girl. I don't think normally you could tell that she was of any sort of Hispanic descent. It just her. She's got a very good generic American accent. I also know she speaks Spanish really well and um, from Cuba, right? Is that where your family was from, was Cuba? Yeah, my parents are from Cuba. Right. And um, and so I always was interested in, before it became a thing, in diverse casting. I just thought, certainly if a character is depicted as a certain ethnic background in animation, I should make best efforts to get that ethnic Actor, actor to play that role. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would always do that. When we decided that we wanted the Thanagarians, the Thanagarians were going to be in this big war story, we said, what do we do to make them sound like a, a, a culture together? Like the Thanagarians are not just they wouldn't sound the same as Wonder Woman's family. Not, they wouldn't sound the same way. But so then we found wonderful actors, wonderful actors who wanted to come and play. And that decision was made right the, from the get-go. As soon as we decided those characters would appear, wow. we were like, let's let that, let's let's let that be. If I can't find enough Hispanic actors to fill the roles, we'll look elsewhere. But we were able to because there were just so many wonderful Hispanic actors yeah. around. Absolutely. I don't yeah. think, I, I, as far as my personal uh, contribution to that part of the animation world, I've never felt like I let people down as far as, I never said, no, we can't use him because he's black, or no, we can't use him because he's Hispanic, or no, it's just like, let's get, why not? Why wouldn't you want? And don't forget that the Screen Actors Guild insists that you fill out a format for every episode that says, how many um, uh, men are you hiring? How many women are you hiring? Of what age? They want to make sure we weren't hiring just 35 year old men, white men, you know? <laughs> and so you had to fill out uh, what their ethnic background was and their age uh, and uh, sex, uh, male or female. And, th- and so I had no problem with that. And I always felt like I was able to fill that out with lots of diversity. And that was important to me. Hmm. Oh, wow. And yeah. I felt like it was more of an artistic choice that you guys had way back then before, sure. before Hollywood was forced to do it. For sure. And then also you think about animation for heaven's sake, especially, that you should let the, it doesn't matter what the actor looks like and what they sound like exactly. is a myriad of different different voices because that's their talent that's so, right so good for you for seeing you know having the common sense to let actors act they, absolutely I, I know the funny thing is too is that you'd find like a hispanic actor or say an asian actor for an asian part or whatever and all their careers they have spent trying to get rid of their accent mm-hmm. and then they would be hired for me i'd say i need to kind of bring that back a little bit so, <laughs> 
but I want you to actually, you know, tap into that accent again. Right. right. It doesn't have to be huge. We didn't want anybody to lay on an accent. We wanted them to embrace their natural accent. And then it all sounded so lovely. Just the way we did the acting, which was natural and real. And the accents should go along with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Robert, thank you. Great one to start us off with. And my favorite serious episode is actually the Christmas episode. Even though it ends all oh, lighthearted. I, I episode with Carl Lumley. Yeah, yeah, comfort and joy. Because because it's all about the it's all about the characters and 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 the naturalist to it and yeah, I yeah. That one. good one. Yeah, and and the grand the retelling of the Nutcracker with the Teddy Rexpin rocking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> great. So what's next? Uh, Peter, was it intimidating to be cast as such iconic characters? Mm. Mm. Kevin, if we go chronologically, we start with you. Because I was casting that series. The only Batman experience I had was the uh, Bruce, was the uh, Adam West show. And, you know, Batman the Animated Series was kind of establishing all this stuff for Bruce Tim and Eric, Eric Radomski and everybody. So I felt like I was kind of in the ground floor of, of creating the animated version of, of the Batman. Um, so, so there hadn't been one before, yeah. And um, so I was lucky that way. But yeah, the, you do feel a certain trepidation, I think, when you're putting on the cowl. Um, <laughs> and the first time that Adam West came on our show, I was so nervous to meet him because he was the Batman of my youth, you know. And mm -hmm. I felt like I was treading on his territory a little bit. But yeah. he was so warm and he was so generous and nice guy. He said, man, it's your turn to have fun with it. Just have a blast. He said, I had so much fun with it. It's your turn now. Nice. So, wow. I think everyone just takes a turn in these roles yeah. and um, has to enjoy it while they have it. Yeah. It's like, Absolutely. like Hamlet. Like. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. As always, it all goes back to Shakespeare. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Andrea, uh, like I said, you had you had uh, the the kitchen had basically been made with uh, with you and Kevin and, on the Batman series, and now yeah, it was all of a sudden okay. Here's the rest of the super people. Uh, take it away. Um, to say intimidating is is to minimize minimize it because it was hard enough to do Batman the Animated Series casting-wise than to do all of these characters. And you know, people who are fans of the comic books, they had real opinions about what they thought John, John Jones would sound like. Or yeah. what. You know, some of the words that we had to say had never been actually spoken. They were only in written form on a comic. Yeah. So when we had to pronounce things, whether it was, you know, for Superman, Mitzias Picklick, or whatever yeah. kind of weird, oh, we, that's, we that's decided that we would call him Lex Luthor, as opposed to Luther, yeah, uh, right. things like that, which there was no real... You know, nobody said absolutely the way to pronounce it is this. So we would just say, what do we want to do? Let's pronounce it this way. Themyscira. Let's pronounce Themyscira this way. Or Ray Jean Gould. Ray Jean Gould. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, um, it was intimidating. Absolutely. I like a challenge. I'm not, I'm not afraid to do lots of hard work because I knew we were, I think we were committed to, golly, does anybody remember what our first buy on this was? Was it? like 26 episodes i don't remember but it was enough to say that we're going to be hanging out together a lot and because i do ensemble record that means we're going to be hanging around a lot together mm -hmm. and uh so i want to make sure that aside from people being the right actors and able to do the voices and able to allow me to direct them and what i mean by that is i have so many years of experience doing this that i can pretty much tell you what the right line reading for almost any line will be and how it will work with the animation but you don't want to just shove that under people you want them to yeah. find it in and of themselves and then if they're having trouble and we're you know losing time then you kind of without them knowing yeah, like you know, read them and <laughs> you move on but um but i i considered you guys truly like a party we would get together on whatever day that we were recording and exactly. with the exception of occasionally kevin being in new york or maria shooting somewhere or somebody else phil somebody's toured wherever we for yeah. the most part rehearsed and recorded together and i you know i have to say at this point i 
get a damn good job because I never <laughs> it did. didn't it did. like spending time with you guys. I always love spending time with you. When we had occasion to, after the fact, spend time together at like Comic Cons or screenings or something, it only encouraged the fact that I had hired not just the right actors, but the right people. Because you end up waiting 15 minutes at the beginning of a session for everybody to arrive and you talk about everything. You talk about politics, you talk about health, you talk about the world, you talk about family, and you really get some insight to everybody else's life. And and so we were a family and we were friends and uh, and everybody did their work so beautifully. Absolutely, absolutely. Maria, you had a unique position and maybe uh, equally trepidatious in the sense that I don't think there really had been an animated Hawk, uh, Hawk woman or Hawk girl beforehand. So you really blazed the trail for the character. Yeah, I'd never heard of her. <laughs> and uh, of course I knew Superman, I knew Batman, I knew the super, super famous ones. And I loved the Christopher Reeve film and I love Wonder Woman with Linda Carter and all that. So I didn't know myself. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it was exciting because I got to um, be part of people's first impression for a lot of people of Hawkgirl. So that that was an honor. And I love to hear people talk about how much they love her and that I have some part in that is make is like, wow, it's so cool. And the writing on our show was so incredible. And, you know, and I didn't know she was going to. I was so silly. I got upset when they sent when they gave me that script <laughs> when I betray them. I was oh, yeah. really, I was offended. I was so <laughs> how stupid, how short sighted when drama and conflict is the kind of stuff you want. So it was right. it was really a wonderful blessing, but I was like, What am I doing? <laughs> so, funny. I just think she was a great, great, wonderful opportunity for me to to help her come to life. It was awesome. Yeah. You know what's so so. great about both the female leads on this show is they were both uh, tough broads. The, the women were tough, but there was such a soft, emotional side to them. And you both brought that. You brought the tough when it needed to because both of you were fighters, warriors. But there had to be that emotional side, whether it's the love affair with um, Jon Stewart or whether it's with Batman or Super, whatever. It, there was a you had to do both, and you both did that so so well. Really. Yeah, in front, in the back. Do you remember? Uh, <laughs> I was pregnant with both my daughters during the four years that we taped, and I, I tell them when we watch the show, I said, "You were, you were pregnant movie. for four years." Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> during That's a the huge years, baby. My, both my pregnancies were during those four years, right? Right, and uh, I tell them, you guys were with me in that recording studio. We were we were screaming together. And I remember I would get all girly and hormonal, and Andrea would say, "She's a warrior. She's a warrior." Warrior. Oh yeah, so I come from. <laughs> I, I remember this, and you told me when you were pregnant. I think it was the first time you said, "Please don't." don't tell anybody yet because I'm still working on camera. I don't want anybody to not consider because I'm pregnant and I can still hide this for a long time. And you did for goodness sake, you were just so gorgeous. But I remember George walking into the studio one day and you were probably four months pregnant by then, maybe five. And George incredibly innocently just goes, so how far along are you? Ah! <laughs> George knew I was pregnant. He did. I he thought, said, "I've got four. I've got three, four kids of my own. And I can tell that you are pregnant. And you, Either and that or you, you're pregnant. really full. <laughs> but you were so busted. I didn't tell anybody except George. Just uh, nailed it. Yeah, no, I could, I could tell immediately. I remember that day. You could, you could just see it. You could see it in their face. Uh, it's not. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. <laughs> I thought it was very insightful, George. Uh, nice. uh, Phil, we had seen animated versions of Hal Jordan Green Lantern before, but uh, you were our first John Stewart Green Lantern. Yeah, well, I mean, I obviously Kevin, George, and Susan playing the big three have a very different, you know, experience than those of us on the B list. Um, I mean, for exactly what exactly what Maria said nobody really had expectations. I mean, with Wonder Woman and Superman and Batman, even people who don't read comic books have an idea of what that character should be, should sound like. There wasn't really anybody who was going to go, um, I don't think so, John Stewart. 
<laughs> you know, John Stewart, I know, yeah. right? And 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 thankfully, the Daily Show wasn't that big yet, so you know we were good. <laughs> All right, well, again, it was because it's it, the character has a up and down history. His personality definitely fluctuated in the comics, and again, mm. they made the good choice. He was a former Marine. Let's make that the starting point of mm. him. And you, again, you you ran the ball with it perfectly. And and I and I I've I've, I've joked about you of this before. I just would have loved for seeing one boxing glove just once <laughs> <laughs> or one big giant mouse trap or just something ridiculous like that. But, <laughs> but see that that's, that's if John Stewart had been a cartoonist right? Yes. and then became a green lantern. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. So but if, but if you're a military man, you're trying to get the job done. No. All I need is a beam of force. <laughs> of being, of course. Uh, uh, Susan, so uh, Wonder Woman definitely had some some predecessors. Well, One. you know that Linda, but then also um, Super Friends. Um, yeah, right. But you know, people ask me this, and the truth is that you know, I I was working with. To, you know, Bruce and Andrea, and they already had a vision for the character. So I wasn't concerned about what had come before because really my job was to make what they wanted the character to be now. And um, I was just intimidated by the work. It wasn't by playing Wonder Woman. It was just being a lead in an animated series was intimidating, which I've talked about a lot. But um, I think one <laughs> of the most gratifying things is that, that an entire generation of people, you know, learned about these characters and met these characters, these iconic characters through the through the show. Isn't that something? And there was a whole generation of, of people who didn't know Christopher Reeve or maybe didn't know Linda Carter, know them now maybe, but really they met these characters through us. And I think that that's um, an extraordinary gift for all of us. I, and we get told that a lot. And people, yeah. when they say, when I think of Batman, the voice I hear is Kevin Conroy. When I think of, you know, Wonder Woman, I think of Susan Eisberg. That's what a cool thing. What yeah, really it's really the coolest. The coolest. Yeah. And when people read read the comics, that's, I get told that a lot. When I read that's a comic, Wonder hear. Woman, then I hear you in my head. And, <laughs> and you know, I mean, um, you know, what a gift to all of us that it, I mean, the writing, all of it was just, brilliant and you know we just I think the seven of us got very lucky with our chemistry and with our characters I mean just that we're here now 20 years later talking about it it's I know. uh I know. it's That's extraordinary true. indeed and George uh yeah. he, he, and this was this was a challenge as well for Andrea since uh since you, you were you were coming in uh, Coming out sort of mid midstream, uh, Tim Daly was was doing it, and and I, actually I was so out to lunch I didn't I didn't even realize it I hadn't didn't know Tim was on the show I hadn't I hadn't been following it and I just went in for a one off audition I thought I, I I was a little clueless but then as when I got it I was like oh I just backed into something really much bigger than I realized oh hell so I was a little freaked out so I was I was actually quite nervous for the first uh, uh, first six episodes at least i i sweat through my uh shirt uh, double sweat through that thing yeah. um, because it was really really um uh hard for me to 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 not screw it up and at the same time do what i you know what any, any actor wants to do is to sort of bring themselves to it but at the same time there is an obligation of the george reeves the christopher reeves the all of the you know all of the the history that comes with that from the 19 what was it 1940, late 30s, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's like so the many Michael shorts. And the, oh, the, my gosh. The, yeah. Yeah. The, there's just the history of it was overwhelming, honestly. So I, I tried to just as much as possible empty my empty my brain of any preconceived notions and just be my That's older hard. brother who, who was an Eagle Scout. Yeah. That, that was about it. I mean, I. Andrea, Andrea was, I'm going to talk about her like she's not here right now. <laughs> yeah, Andrea. She, was exceeding, she was exceedingly patient with us. And yeah. if you, you had something me. you were yeah, tripping, ahead. no, with all of yeah, us, no, that, yeah, yeah. Just, like if you were tripping over a word or you couldn't get a take, she would, you know, you'd start to get really nervous. And especially yeah. if you were effing yeah. up your lines and um, everyone's waiting for you in the studio and you're just, you know, like, okay, just calm down. And of course, the more you screw it up, the more nervous you get. And she would just 
you know, like let you know it was okay and you were okay and we'll get it. We we'll would. get it later. We can get it at the end of the session. I mean, Bruce was a man of very few words. So you just, oh, yeah. um, you know. <laughs> You'd if, see it behind the glass, he'd go, he'd go. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> and if you could make him smile, it was You're just like, like oh, that. God. <laughs> Andrea just, Andrea made you, you know, just know it would be okay. So I think we were nervous, but then there was, you know, there she was saying, I we'll get it, back. we'll get it. I had your backs. I, I wouldn't ever let your voices go out there sounding bad. I didn't want you ever to just walk out and go, God, that was just a bad scene. I didn't play it well. I always wanted you to have, mm -hmm. to walk out going, I did a good job today. And then typically what would happen is it'd be those lines that just trip you. They just, yeah. whatever, whatever reason. There was something, I remember a line that I had with someone that was like, um, it was just a tongue twister. And the trick is just leave it. You give them three, four, five days not working, leave it. Go on five minutes into the next scene. Hey, go back and do that line real quick. And they get it on the first take. It's yeah. just hammering it yeah. makes people more nervous and they, it doesn't solve the problem. You gotta get away from it and then come back into it. Yeah. But I always knew you'd get it. I always knew all you guys would get it. I knew you'd get there eventually. It, but it didn't take that long. You guys were very fast learners and you had really good people around you to learn from. And so you picked up really quickly, whether it was, you know, Clancy Brown or you know, yeah. those guys that worked with us. That were so good. Intimidating. Uh, just, yeah, that, that, that what'd, you say, what'd you say, Kevin? What'd you I say, was Kevin? Say Susan hit on something. Bruce Tim was very intimidating. Yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. he, he was. He was. He was. That was right. Very it was my job to talk yeah. to yeah. uh -huh. the man of so few words. I know, I know. The booth and you see through the glass, and he's like pulling his hair out, you know, and you think, oh yeah. no, what's going on now? You know, right, right. Know that's because you never knew what he was talking about. You never knew he was just screaming about the, the animation sound sure. or that you weren't doing it right. I, I you know. No, but. The thing is, he really is such a nice guy, as you guys have gotten oh, to know no. over the oh, years. He's a wonderful guy. But, but yeah. I, I'll never forget, Kevin, there was one time you were in New York, and, you know, I tended to leave the talk back button on because I wanted Kevin to hear Bruce and myself as we were discussing the direction rather than <laughs> waiting. <laughs> and at one point, Kevin did a line reading, and it was, we beat him up a little bit. He did three or four or five takes, whatever. And I turned to Bruce, said, are you okay with that last one? He goes, and I had my hand on the button, and he goes, it's fine. And Kevin, do you remember what you did? Kevin goes, fine, 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 fine. fine. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I do fine. fine. Yeah. And the look <laughs> on Bruce Tim's face was priceless. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. He, he thought the mute button was still on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, you know what's so funny? You want to hear something funny? Like, yeah. I forgot how many years after we finished recording, uh, I'm at Disneyland. And I meant it's a small world ride, and I hear a dad talking to his daughter, and Bruce Tim is right behind me with his oh, daughter. Man. And he's talking really sweet. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I knew he was sweet, but like you guys said, he's intimidating. But when yeah. he does talk and he says anything positive, you're like, wow, he said something. <laughs> I know. Yeah, so he, yeah. he just of all the people at Disneyland, for him to be the one right behind it, it, me. It in fact is a small world after all. All of you guys should know that he had tremendous respect for you. He had tremendous respect for you as actors and the work that you did for the series, the various series that we worked on. I, was a big fan of all of yours. It, it, I, I remember it, him saying when we did Justice League versus the Fatal Five that you know, we were talking one day and he said it was the most, you know, I had the most fun on that show, on Justice League. Nice. I mean, I don't know if he was BSing me, but I'd like to think <laughs> he was true. He wasn't. He, wasn't. he didn't BS. He just didn't. Bruce was always shooting the head. He was, he was passionate. He was passionate. Oh, yeah. You were all passionate. Everybody involved in that series had a genuine love and belief of this product and what it could be. And it, it definitely shows. It would have been real easy to walk through this and just, okay, it's a superhero show, bam, biff, and, and move on. But uh, Justice League and what, what, you, what you all contributed to, it moved the needle tremendously in just awareness of what superhero fiction could be. That, yes, you could tell these moral stories with these characters and they can be engaging they can be fun they weren't action they were adventure they were human and and and, and its legacy is is a testament to it and i i again 
I've said it before. I thank you all for your talents. I thank you for your professionalism. And I thank you for your performances in this role. And I thank you, Andrea, for selecting them and everybody else who worked on this. Thank you, Patty. And, 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 and Peter, I thank you for that question. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the cast and architects of Justice League. Gentlemen and ladies, any, any final uh, words for our audience before we go backstage? Thank you all for continuing to be interested. Yes, <laughs> thank thank you. you. Everybody stay safe and wear your mask. Wear your mask. There you go. There you go. Yeah, That's your That's superpower. Right. Keep it on. That's right. Yes. Uh, as always, yeah. it's been my absolute pleasure to host you all today. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you thank to you our audience it. for joining us. And thank you all for your great questions. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And please keep washing those hands. <laughs>